In Nigeria, Armed Forces Remembrance Day is marked on January 15 to honor members of the Nigerian Armed Forces who fought in the First and Second World Wars and those who served or are still serving in various peace support operations worldwide. As Nigeria honors its fallen heroes who have paid the supreme price in service to the nation, less attention has been paid to the plight of families of soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice while fighting the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast and other security challenges across the country. And now joining me by telephone is Ambassador Roy Ohidebe, a retired military officer and security expert, as he joins us this morning, this afternoon, and shares thoughts and experience. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity, sir. All right. Now, I want to ask you, what, what is your assessment and experience as regard the level of attention and welfare being given to the families of fallen heroes in Nigeria? Well, um... We would have been giving the kudos to government. We would have been shouting now, bravo Zulu. We have a government that has executed all the statutory allocations to veterans. We would have been shouting, bravo Zulu. We have a government that has looked into the plight of the veterans, the number one citizens of the country. But unfortunately, we can't. Because every mile, every centimeter, every step that we have won, we fought for it. You know, at a point, you remember when military veterans were always on strike, they were on the road carrying placards, wearing tattered clothes. Some of them would fall down on the ground. People would be laughing and say, see old soldiers. Now, when some of us came on board as veterans, we had to say no, no more protests on the street, under the sun. We started to hit the media and we started to interact with government agencies, government institutions that have been given the mandate by the Constitution to look into veterans' welfare, to manage it, to monitor it, and to ensure it's delivered. And this is the result that we are getting today. Thank you. All right, now can you briefly take us through some of the duties expected from the Army Authority and the federal government the, the moment a soldier dies in, in an operation? You see, um, the, a takeaway from joining the military is to expect that you will die. That is one thing that we say it's inevitable. But if you come out with your life, let it not be that you were, you were a coward. You cannot stare death in the face. You cannot enter to rescue colleagues. So those of us that have survived throughout all of those escapades, we expect that once a soldier dies, the first thing that should be done is to give the cops a besitting barrier, a barrier of national honors, where the country takes charge of the whole expenses and everything. Then the next thing is to ensure that documentation is processed quickly, quickly and conveniently and comfortably uh, um, achievable by the widow, by the bereaving family. Not that to get their um, gratuity, their death uh, allocations, the, pay, the wife will be traveling to Abuja from Portacot, the wife will be traveling to Abuja from Bayesa, going to beg, tap in hand, for the benefits of your husband that died in active service. So we expect that that should get speedy attention. Another thing is, when the families want to be relocated from the barracks. Many times you see that the families' properties are thrown outside. There should be provision for accommodation. In the world over, I have traveled to the U.S., to Canada, and I've seen that veterans are given accommodation. In Nigeria, there is the Army Post Housing Scheme. You need to go and see all the bridges that you need to cross. You need to go and see all the demons that you need to kill. 
before you can get an allocation to yourself. So before you know what's happening, they throw the wife outside the barracks and the children, and they become homeless. Ambassador, Ward, I would like I would like to chip in now and ask you this. Now you just stated what is expected of the army authorities and the federal government. Now has this been obtainable? Is this what is obtainable as it stands with the Nigerian army once an officer dies? It's obtainable in disparity of cases. There are some cases that you will see that has negligence. There are some cases that also have attention. But my comment is dwelling on the fact that the process is still too cumbersome for a woman that is mourning her husband, for children that are mourning their father or their mother that died at this service. Uh, Ambassador, now, what, let me ask you this. What do, what do you think is largely responsible for the neglect of some of the fallen heroes and their families? In the light of what you just said, what do you think is the major cause of neglect? The major cause, cause of living. Of neglect, of neglect. Your question again? And what do you think is largely responsible for the neglect, the neglect of the fallen heroes okay, and their okay. families? Okay, you see, the neglect it's not intentional. Okay. The, the, there are procedures in place. There are departments in place. There are officers accountable to ensure smooth running of such procedures. But the will to achieve it and lack of penalty for failure, there are two things that are destroying it. Any military pension board chairman that does not perform should be penalized. The one we have today have done so much that every veteran is happy with him. Okay. Every Ministry of Finance officer that does not release money to pay veterans or widows of soldiers should be penalized. The system is okay. okay. It is to fine-tune for compliance and ensure disciplinary action. Okay, and, and fine-tune into compliance, like you rightly said. Now, what, what kind of arrangement or scheme do you think can be fashioned out to tap into the experience of retired military men or still engage them in tackling security issues across the country as an expert yourself? The, the, the government uh, made a good step at the first instance in creating the Nigerian Legion. We have the Nigerian Legion currently in the Nigerian Constitution the Legion is captured. But you see, along the line, the content of the Legion has not been reviewed upward, and the commitment of government to the Legion, it waned drastically at so many points that the Legion cannot carry out its constitutional role anymore. So I advise government, governors, let's start from the states where people relocate to settle. They should put these people together. They cannot go into active armed combat anymore. But there are very mighty opportunities to enter into covert surveillance, counter intelligence, and they can be deployed to train personnel of state or paramilitary organizations. It's a pool of knowledge. All right. Ambassador Roy Hidebe, I want to say thank you for joining us and contributing to Plus TV Africa's News on the Hour. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, and God bless our fallen heroes and the living heroes.